What's up guys and welcome back to Job Site Conditions right here on Deco Creek TV. My name's Jeff and on today's episode we're going to show you guys how to restore old faded stamped concrete sealer uh, applying little to no new sealer. Now this is going to be a step-by-step -step video covering prep work, weather conditions, proper equipment and applications so stay tuned and you're going to learn all about it. in the frame. <laughs> so today's project rates is a three on our DIY meter and the product we're going to be using is this rejuvenator from Deco Creek. I mean, man, I got to tell you guys, stamped concrete sealer can be a real nightmare sometimes. You know, that could be because it got over applied, sealed at the wrong time, or man, sometimes there's nothing wrong with the sealer at all. It just needs something to bring it back to life. Now, the thing about Rejuvenator is it, it's not a sealer at all. It's actually more of a blend of solvents that's going to work with your existing sealer and not against it. Now, Rejuvenator does have quite a few different uses, so we're going to go over a few of them here in the studio. I mean, this job that we're heading out to today is really only one of the ways that Rejuvenator can be a lifesaver. Now, the number one thing to remember about it is that Rejuvenator will only work if there's actually sealer on the concrete. So just make sure that you test this first. And if your concrete is completely bare, I mean, honestly, Rejuvenator is going to be kind of a waste of time. Now, that's not a bad thing at all. That's actually a good thing. It just means you get to skip this step and go straight to the ceiling. Now, the first one is just over application. And this could be from putting too much sealer on at one time, or it could come from sealing your concrete too often. And that's honestly one of the most common, thing, common things that we hear from homeowners is that they've been sealing their concrete every year. Now, if this is you, I mean, don't worry. This isn't your fault. I mean, you didn't really know any better. It does make a lot of sense. I mean, sealer protects concrete and you just want to do what's best for it. Now, there might also be other cases where the contractor that poured it for you, they may have told you to seal it every single spring. But no matter what the reason, too much sealer will cause some problems. And that's just the one thing that I can tell you for sure. Now, another problem that comes up is sealing the concrete too soon after it's been poured. Now, this usually ends up uh, trapping a little bit of moisture under the sealer, and it generally is going to show up as some big white spots. Now, another thing that happens is just unexpected weather conditions. I mean, even though you plan really carefully, I mean, sometimes the weather just doesn't cooperate. And, you know, getting caught in the rain is just never a good thing when you're sealing concrete. But on stamped concrete, where you notice every little detail, I mean, you're probably just going to end up with a really bunch of really noticeable little white spots the size of those raindrops. Now, direct sunlight can also cause, and high temps can also cause problems on stamped concrete, usually leading to bubbling. Now, the last thing here, I mean, isn't really a problem that happens during installation, but it can definitely lead to problems down the road, and that would be just unrealistic expectations. And this usually comes from the level of sheen, and it mostly happens when using high gloss sealers. I mean, it is so shiny in the beginning, and everybody just loves it, but then after a year, I mean, it's just not that shiny anymore, and the homeowner generally think that it needs to be resealed. Now, fortunately, Rejuvenator can solve all these problems as long as it's applied right. So probably the most common thing that people use Rejuvenator for is to bring back the color and the shine to your stamp concrete. Now, this is a pretty easy fix. I mean, generally one application of Rejuvenator is all it's gonna take. And this is really, really great for those in-between years of resealing. I mean, it'll keep your stamp concrete looking the way you want. You'll still see all the color. You'll still have some shine, but you didn't add any more sealer. Now, fixing problems with we from weather or sealing too soon, I mean, that's where Rejuvenator is just something you always wanna have on hand. I mean, it'll clear out those little white spots from the rain or even the bigger white spots from trapped moisture. It'll lay down bubbles or it'll even freshen up sealer that may have been applied correctly. It just got a little bit damaged from con some construction going on around it. And you just wanna freshen it up before you open the patio. In this case, it's a pretty simple spray back roll and let it do its thing. Now, when it comes to dealing with over application, I mean, this one is gonna be a little bit more work and sometimes you might have to remove the, the old sealer altogether. I mean, honestly, this job that we're heading to is kind of right on the borderline of being fixable with Rejuvenator. I mean, most of the sealer is pretty worn down for the most part, but there are a few spots that have a really heavy buildup that we're gonna be able to help out. But honestly, sandblasting is really the only surefire way of completely getting rid of it. This is more than likely gonna be a few applications. It's gonna require some work, possibly some scrubbing with a brush. And you know, again, you're just gonna have to live with what you get from the rejuvenator. And then if you want something more than that, then you're gonna have to go to removal. Now, the other thing that Rejuvenator uh, does is it can act as a primer uh, for reseals. And in this case, this would be a pretty simple thing to do. Just prep for your reseal and then spray and roll a coat of Rejuvenator and then apply that new sealer uh, to the slab once you can walk on it without sticking to it. 
So the tools that we're gonna need for today's project are gonna be a pressure washer and a leaf blower for the prep work. We're gonna need a sprayer and some rollers to apply the rejuvenator. And we will need a few various brushes and a couple small items. And we'll go over to that uh, over that stuff once we get to the job site. Now, the main product we're gonna need is just uh, some rejuvenator, but we're also gonna take a can of Super Stamp Seal with us just in case we need to add a little bit of sealer at the end. And don't worry about remembering all this stuff. Right now, the tools and products are all linked right down in the description below. So with that all out of the way, I think it's time to head to the job site and get started. So we made it out here to the job site and uh, I gotta say that, you know, this exact patio, this is a very typical uh, scenario uh, for a great place for rejuvenator. You know, as you guys are looking at this, uh, when everything's dry, I mean, man, I can definitely understand why uh, someone who didn't know any better would look at this and say, this slab needs sealer because it doesn't look that good. It looks dull. There doesn't seem to be much color here. Uh, but, you know, we already were here um, a, a few weeks back and we did some testing with our sealer survival kit uh, with rejuvenator as well as the testing solution. And I'm telling you, there is definitely sealer on this slab. You know, I mean, again, you know, now that I'm up here on this slab, you know, sitting here, I can tell that there is definitely sealer on here. I can see, you know, the buildup. Uh, but, you know, if you're not, if you don't know what to look for, just doing this test first is just such a good idea because in some cases, you know, maybe there isn't any sealer on this slab and this rejuvenator just isn't gonna do, do you any good. This only works if there is sealer on here to react with. And so for a full video on the sealer survival kit and how to do all these tests, uh, just please check out our episode of the Concrete Edge and we go through the whole thing uh, in that video. So right where I'm uh, uh, sitting right now, you know, there used to be a, a table or I believe maybe a swing right here. And you can see that it definitely looks different here. I mean, this spot right here, I mean, I can just literally feel the buildup of sealer uh, right here. As you get out away from that, where the sun doesn't, or where the sun is beating on it constantly, um, you know, you can see that the, there's way less sealer out there. So, uh, you know, going back to our testing for a second, it's always a good idea to test different parts of the slab because if I test this spot right here, I can, there's tons of sealer there. I'm gonna get a good reaction, but you always wanna make sure you test multiple spots just to make sure that there, there might be some spots on the slab that doesn't have sealer. Uh, but we'll worry about that after the rejuvenator is done. The worst thing we can do is just go apply sealer right now. Um, you know, but that, after this is all done, the rejuvenator is dried up, we're gonna know exactly where those spots are that might need a little bit more sealer, and then we'll add it at that point. Now, uh, what do we wanna watch out for? There is one scenario, and that is uh, if there was a water-based sealer on here. And this is something that you will know during that testing process. When you put that rejuvenator on a water-based acrylic that have, might happen, it's some concrete, uh, stamped concrete slabs do have water-based sealer on. And in that case, uh, it's just never going, and this is why you test small, small areas. But um, you know, if that sealer doesn't melt, or if it does melt and it just turns into kind of a white, um, you know, milkiness, and it never really dries up into a hard film again, then we just know that that was uh, probably some sort of a water-based resin that was on there. And in that case, you know, rejuvenator is not a good idea. This is made for solvent-based sealers only. So first step is going to be washing um, and, and drying, and that's it for today. We always want to do that the day before. That way, it's got plenty of time to dry out and uh, then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll do the rejuvenator. Uh, so today's tools that were required are pretty minimal. Um, you know, I do have, you know, the sealer survival kit here with us, a few brushes for that, a box of rags is always a good idea. Other than that, honestly, a pressure washer and a leaf blower is pretty much all we need. You know, I mean, it's always a good idea to bring a few uh, various brushes with you and maybe a little bit of, of detergent in case there's a stubborn spot or some rust that needs to be removed. In this case, um, today, all we're going to need is the washer and the leaf blower. So, so when it comes to the power washing part, you know, th th this is really, really important. And, you know, even though we're not putting any sealer on this slab tomorrow, we're, we're, I mean, at least we don't plan to, that would be only, you know, fill in a little bit if we need to. But with, for rejuvenator, we still have to treat this light we're putting sealer on and we need to get very very thoroughly clean now some of this starts with equipment if you're just trying to use a little electric power washer or even a gas powered one that's like maybe only 2000 psi it's just not going to have enough force to blast those pores open and to get it as clean as we need to get it so um, you know we always say a minimum 3000 psi um, you know we actually have a 4000 now, of course, you have to use some common sense on this. If you have a super high power washer like this one right here is, and we hold this thing all the way down against the concrete, yes, we can do some damage. Uh, so some care needs to be taken to make sure this is uh, in the right spot here, but we do want that much power uh, to, to do a good job uh, cleaning these things. That's the worst thing we could do is just come out here and barely hose it down. And without getting this thing properly cleaned, uh, we're just gonna uh, only add more uh, problems to this patio, not fix the problems. And as far as a little bit of technique, 
Um, and we have a full video on this. Uh, please check out the video that goes through everything on this step by step. But uh, just for a little bit of a couple quick tips is uh, we already talked about the right equipment. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're holding this wand the right way. Um, honestly, a lot of times when you tell somebody to go out and power wash something, this is what they do. And they're just sort of uh, power rinsing is sort of what we call that. So, um, and, and the washer's not fired up right now. I'm just kind of using the, this water as a visual. But if I, if I just sort of do what I call the power rinse, you can see that you know I'm not really actually blasting any pores open. In fact, all the way out on the end of my uh, my fan there, it's barely even hitting it. So what we're looking for is straight up and down, 90 degrees to the surface. And then when I turn my washer on, I got that entire fan all hitting consistently. Um, and you guys will be able to see this once we actually fire the washer up. And then as far as you know, how close do you hold it? You know, you're gonna have to use some common sense. You're gonna have to adjust a little bit. But what I always say is, I want to hold it as close as I can without doing any damage because that's going to be the most efficient uh, way of going about this. Um, so we're going to spend some time on this, uh, get it all clean, leaf blow it off, and at that point we're just going to let it sit and dry overnight and we'll be back tomorrow to put on the rejuvenator. All right, so we are back here the next morning and um, you can see that, you know, after we're done last night, everything is now nice and clean. And uh, I will say that we did get a lot of rain overnight. And uh, so uh, that kind of brings us to our first point here this morning um, is to always make sure that you bring the leaf blower back to the job with you, um, you know, just in case you have to, you know, we, we ran the, the leaf blower through these saw cuts just in case there was any water sitting. In this case, there wasn't and everything was fine, but always bring that leaf blower back just in case and then also uh, an actual uh, like a weed burner propane torch is also a great thing to have uh, that way in case there is any additional moisture in the slab that you need to burn out those it's just a great way to get rid of it in a short amount of time uh, please check out uh, jason's technique of the week episode where he goes over the whole uh, leaf burner technique uh, in depth so other tools that we're going to need today are going to be first of all uh, we're going to need a sprayer to spray this rejuvenator we're going to need a couple different rollers to back roll it out i like to have both a 9 and an 18 that way i can get as close to the edges um, you know in this case you know the, the 18 might be good but i always like to have both of those options obviously handles to put those roller frames on a box of rags is always really really important because you just never know on a job like this now the other thing uh, that we're definitely going to be using today is one of these acid brushes here uh, just because back in those it, it's not going to be the case out here where i'm at necessarily but back behind me along that wooden deck there's a really big buildup of sealer back there and you know you can see again all those the yellowy crystally areas uh, a lot of times in order to properly fix that we're going to have to take this brush and we're going to spray our rejuvenator down and then we're really, really going to scrub it around and agitate it with something like this. Um, and that what that does is kind of redistributes everything and then we'll back roll it out. And otherwise, you know, the rejuvenator might help it, but it won't permanently fix that problem. The other thing that I brought to the job with me is actually a little bit of sealer because sometimes after, you know, we're going to do this whole thing with rejuvenator and if everything looks great, it dries up and everything is looks the way we want it to, then that's it. We're going to leave it alone. There's no reason to add any more sealer to it. But in some cases, uh, there are some spots that are actually bare of sealer. And the only way to know that is to put the rejuvenator on first. It's all going to look great the second we apply it. But as that rejuvenator starts to dry um, and evaporate, um, those spots, if there was no sealer there, they're going to kind of go back to looking the way they are now. So we may have to add a little bit of sealer after we're, we're done with this first uh, application of rejuvenator. So when we get started applying, um, and again, the most preferred way of doing this is to put this stuff in a chapin sprayer, spray it down and back roll it out. Now, unlike sealer, uh, where we're generally trying to put this on as thin as we possibly can, Rejuvenator, uh, not only is there, it's not gonna hurt anything to apply plenty of this stuff, but in some cases, especially in those heavy buildup areas, we actually need a lot on here. Now, this area is roughly about 250 square feet, uh, which isn't very big. Uh, this, and I'm gonna be doing this, you know, kind of by myself today, and I'm just gonna kind of work in the saw cuts. I'm gonna do a section at a time. I'm gonna finish areas as I go, but honestly, to be efficient or on a bigger area, uh, this is generally not a one person job. This is always better to have one person to spray the material, one person to be back rolling it, scrubbing. Um, you know, it's just gonna work better if you have two people. Now, the other thing, that is absolutely vital is temperature and direct sunlight. Now you can see that, you know, we are standing in some direct sunlight today. We, we've got some intermittent cloud cover, it's back and forth. Even though it's the middle of summertime in Ohio, 
we strategically picked this day because it's only supposed to be about, I think it's like 72 at a high today. So if we're not dealing with super high temps. And that's really important because once we put this rejuvenator down and it opens that coat of sealer back up that's already on this slab, it's almost like we just applied that coat of sealer. And if it's too hot, uh, it will start to bubble on us just like it was if we were applying the sealer for the first time. So um, ideally we would do this in a time of day where we're not in direct sunlight. Right now, it's only about 65 degrees uh, ambient temperature right now, but I got my little infrared thermometer here, and this is something that, you know, for a do-it-yourself, where you can pick these things up for 20, 30 bucks, and you just point it at the slab, uh, pull the button, and I'm getting a reading right now where I'm standing of 82 degrees, so that's still in really, really good shape. The big number that I'm looking for there is, you know, the, the safe number is, uh, is anything under 100 degrees. And the big misconception is I've got this call many, many a times from, from uh, people out in the field and they say, we got stuff bubbling on us. Um, what's going on? It's only 70 degrees out. It's not even very hot. But if they would have had one of these and shot that slab, you know, if it's three o'clock in the afternoon and we shoot this again, this slab could be, you know, 120 degrees, even though it's actually only 75 degrees ambient temperature. So incredibly important is to, you know, stay out of the sunlight when you can. But if that's not possible, um, just don't apply this once your slab is, uh, you know, cross that 100 degree threshold. So we're gonna start by just spraying the rejuvenator right down on the surface, and then we're gonna start scrubbing it around. Now, uh, you usually have to wait maybe two to three minutes to let this rejuvenator start to actually melt uh, the sealer that's there for a second, but uh, we're gonna use a paintbrush up along the edges, and then this acid brush is just really key that as this rejuvenator starts to break down, that old sealer that we really just scrub it around, we need to really agitate it, uh, break it loose, but then also try to pull it over to the areas that doesn't have as much sealer. And so it's kind of doing two things for us. It's sort of um, taking some of the sealer off the heavy buildup area, but it's also putting a little bit of sealer back on the areas uh, that aren't quite as heavy. So after we do all that, um, you know, and it's okay that, you know, during that process, it might want to start to start, um, you know, tacking up just a little bit on you. We can just spray some more rejuvenator right on top of what we just scrubbed. And then we're just going to back the uh, back roll the whole thing out. And this is key again, that this is, this does require some work. There's a lot of scrubbing involved on a job like this. So we got this half of the slab done. And honestly, this first square we did, um, it, this stuff is dry and I'm standing on it right now. You know, it is completely tack free at this point. Um, and this is kind of, you know, like I said earlier, rejuvenator is not always a just spray one coat down, back roll it, uh, walk away one and done, uh, fixes everything. Now what you can see is the drastic difference of just simply one coat of rejuvenator, because that's all this is, is just one coat of rejuvenator. Uh, there is no sealer that's been applied and you can see the drastic difference of what we had uh, to start off with and what we have now. And honestly, it, it looks really good uh, with the exception of just more sealer in, in some area, more old sealer in others. Um, you know, if the sealer was consistent, this, this might be it. My whole point is that after you get done with one application, if you like what you have, by all means, it's all you need to do. You can stop right there. In today's case, you know, we're trying to make this thing look as good as we can. I was just talking to the homeowner before we started and this slab is about 17 years old and they were putting coats of sealer on it every two years uh, for quite, quite some time. And so this has just many, many layers of sealer on top of sealer. So for the rest of this coat, we're just basically gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna finish uh, the rest of this uh, patio out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an, another application doing the exact same thing we did the first time. Again, just really focusing on those heavy buildup areas, trying to scrub that uh, you know, old sealer around, break it down, move it out in the other area. And uh, you know, after this second application, then we'll take a look and see what we wanna do next. So everything looks actually pretty dang good here, uh, but I gotta say, you know, those there's a few spots that are just bugging me. And, and, and again, don't get me wrong here, this uh, slab does not need any more sealer at all. Even those spot, the spots that look a little bit dull, there's plenty of sealer on there to protect it. But in this case, you know, we're just trying to make everything look as even as possible. So all I'm gonna do now is, you know, now this stuff is dry enough to walk on, I'm just gonna walk out here and I'm just gonna mist a tiny bit of sealer on these areas uh, that look a little bit different. I'm gonna have my nine inch roller and just back roll it out a little bit. And then that's it. I'm gonna just let it go from there and let that do its thing. The, the worst mistake I could make right now is just putting too much sealer back on this patio that honestly in some spots still has too much sealer on it. So you can see after all that is said and done and a little bit of sealer in those spots, man, we got this thing looking pretty good. I mean, we took it from looking like this to this uh, using literally less than a half a gallon of actual sealer. So this just goes to show you how much you can do with just rejuvenator and maybe a tiny bit of sealer to a slab that honestly looked like it was completely bare. 
Well guys, that's pretty much it for this week's show and thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch these videos, man. I just can't tell you how much it means to us that you guys, uh, all the support that you guys show uh, by constantly tuning in every week. And uh, please leave us a comment if you missed anything or if you have any questions about restoring stamp concrete sealer. So from all of us here at Decocrete TV, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.